talking today about the benefits of intermittent fasting for women over 30. I'm super excited. I'm going to make sure I can see comments. I also have a shit ton of notes. So ooh, ooh, ooh. we're going to try and make this friendly and not curse and keep this cursing until no promises, but <laughs> I have a bunch of notes because I don't want to miss anything. So if you're new here, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Renee Paulson. I am a recovered food and sugar addict and also a healthy living and nutrition coach. I struggled with my weight for years and finally had a full meltdown over not getting a hamburger from McDonald's to really carry me down the path to realize that food and sugar addiction was a real thing and that that's what I was hardcore struggling with. Um, I started this health and weight loss journey several years ago. <clears throat> My asthma is acting up. So if I clear my throat several times, I'm sorry. Um, it's like I feel like I'm talking through a straw today. So, um, But I did the the yo-yo up and down several times throughout my lifetime, losing weight and gaining it back because I never really focused on health. Now, this the last time when I really focused on health and really lost all my weight and kept it off, a big part of that journey was intermittent fasting. Now, side note, I will tell you that I was practicing intermittent fasting for a really long time, but without really knowing that that's what I was doing. Uh, I also contribute this to me not have being pre-diabetic at the time of my car accident when I was at my heaviest. And that's because I was already practicing intermittent fasting, just didn't really know what that was. So I really want to get into kind of the bones and the structure and what the benefits of intermittent fasting are. A lot of people really want to use it for weight loss um, and to burn fat, which it can be very helpful to do that. But that's like a very, very tiny benefit it sounds like a huge benefit of intermittent fasting, like you burn more fat, right? Yeah. But that's really only one small benefit of intermittent fasting, and it has massive benefits. And once you hit age 30, ladies, I got to tell you that really honing in and getting that intermittent fasting and, and figuring out what works for you is only going to help you, especially going into perimenopause, menopause, and then postmenopause. Like all of those shenanigans. I haven't entered premenopause. I kind of am like creeping into having few symptoms, but not all the way through. And let me tell you that I am going to make sure that my fasting game is on point because I don't want any of those symptoms. So our brains and our bodies are already designed to do intermittent fasting. Um, people have been doing it since the beginning of time. Obviously more forced in the beginning when we didn't have like grocery stores and stuff like that. But intermittent fasting, there's, you know, we call breakfast, breakfast is a break fast. Most people would break their fast with that. But fasting has been around, you know, like I said, for forever. And our bodies are really more designed to have times where we fast. And there's all sorts of different types of intermittent fasting. There's times when you can do a daily intermittent fasting. You can also do differing hours, however long. Again, it's like a what works for you. You can do there's people who eat regular for five days and then fast for two days. There's people who eat regular and split those days up. Personally, for myself, I usually practice, I want to say, I'm going to say regularly five days a week. More like six, but sometimes I like to have breakfast on the weekends and do pancakes or things like that, you know, if the kids are cooking or anything. Um, but I usually practice, you know, five days a week at least, and I will fast starting Oh, I have to think really how long I go now. I want to say I go at least usually about 18 hours and I fit everything in in that six hour eating window. Now here's where the big, big, big rule and the guidance for intermittent fasting comes from. It is not starving yourself. It is the opposite of starving yourself because if you starve yourself, really number one, especially as a female, the one thing that you're going to do is you're going to jack up your hormones which makes it feel impossible to lose weight. You feel tired, cranky, super witchy. That's a nice way to say that. <laughs> and very short tempered. Um, so we don't want to starve ourselves. That's definitely not the way to go and not the way to lose weight because once you start to do that, um, fasting can add some stress on the body. We're going to talk about those in a little bit, but if you're starving yourself, meaning you're not getting the amount of food that you need in your eating window, we're going to cover that in a second, then essentially you are starving yourself. You're, you're going and in, dipping into a severe calorie restriction. And number one, the things 
you know, physiological things happen with the body when you do that. Um, I don't know if you've ever like tried to really restrict and then a couple days like food starts to smell, taste, look, sound better. That's literally your body trying to trick you into eating because you're starving. So let's not starve ourselves. What really fasting is, is you pick your calorie intake. I want, that sounds weird. Not pick your calorie intake, but you have your calorie intake, whatever that means for you. Now, I can tell you what my calorie intake is, but that's not going to help you because it's a very personalized thing depending on where you're at in your life, what you're doing, what stress is going on, you know, lots of different factors, what your workouts are, all of those things. So <clears throat> whatever your calorie intake is, which again, it should be over 1,200 calories intake period across the board, unless you're like a tiny four foot ten woman know what I mean? Most of the time your calories need to be 1200 or more because when you start to restrict that, that's when your body starts to go into starvation mode. Your hormones start to shift and fluctuate. Your body starts to hold on to that fat. We don't want that to happen. So let's say, for example, your calorie intake is 1800 calories. You're going to take in 1800 calories throughout the day, but you want to fast um, in your eating window. So you have a fasting window. Your fasting window is the time you're not eating, right? Let's say it's 12 hours and then your other eating window is 12 hours. In 12 hours, you need to get all of that calorie intake in in that eating window. So you're not starving yourself. However, also calories do matter. I mean, you know, pizza versus like broccoli is a bad example, but the only example I've got right now <laughs> is you really want to fast. Um, when you break your fast, you want to break your fast with good food. It's going to really like replenish your body and just <laughs> think of your body as just like sucking up all that stuff. So I like to break my fast. Most of the time I break my fast with my big everyday protein shake that's got protein powder and chia seeds and oats and spinach and like lots of good stuff. And also on the side, I usually have a little snack. I do like some carrots, pigeon sauce or fruit or some goldfish are good. I like just, I just need something to chew. That's a personal thing. But that's the parameters of intermittent fasting is making sure that you're getting that nutrition that you need in that eating window. So I don't know if you've ever heard, there's a, uh, there's an acronym for it. It's like the one meal a day. Oh, man. Ha <laughs> ha. I just need to spell it out. Um, some people do the one meal a day where like you're sitting down, you're having a huge meal and you're eating like for an hour and the rest of the time you're fasting. Wow. Um, I have not done that. I've seen my husband has tried to do that and it just that seems very intense. So um, I don't do that. And again, I'm doing what fasting feels good for me. This is another key thing when you're looking at intermittent fasting is not trying to push your body into certain parameters, but rather looking at number one, if how you eat now. So for me, like I was not a big breakfast person. <clears throat> I don't know about you. I'm a mom. I run up. When I get up, I'm running. I'm running. Um, especially when I was younger. Well, changing diapers hasn't been for a while. <clears throat> but I'm running. I'm getting people breakfast. I'm doing this. I'm going to get the dog outside and blah, 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 blah. So I was never a big breakfast person. So that's something that was natural for me to really cut out and go into where when I start to eat now, I usually start to eat around two or three. Um, this morning was different. I did a huge leg day and so I needed to eat this morning. So again, it's feeling what feels good for your body. If you're not a big breakfast person, maybe that's the meal that you cut out. If it's dinner, maybe that's where you, you, you skimp back on your time and your eating window. The one thing that it cannot be is that you can't like, oh, I'm going to eat breakfast and then I'm going to fast and then I'm going to eat dinner. It needs to be all together because what ends up happening when you eat is you break your fast. And then if you like, you're like, well, I'm not going to eat lunch and I'll just eat dinner later, your body goes into war of like starvation mode. So it needs to be in the eating, you know, fasting window all come together and then the eating window, making sure you're getting all of your good nutrients. And side note, this is just because I love to give information. Most women um, need a multivitamin and that would be you know, when you break your fast, adding that multivitamin right there to just kind of like help your body. <laughs> Again, suck it up. I love that. <laughs> suck up all of the good nutrients. Now, some of the benefits of, I'm going to say some, because I'm like, I can't just sit here and list everything. And you know, also some are like, well, it may help with cardiovascular disease. I 
I'm not going to give you the, well, it may help with this. I'm going to give you the solid ones that, hey, we know that this helps with this. <laughs> and we have some solid studies and proof. Um, so yes, it does help with fat loss because um, it can also increase your HGH, which helps build your muscle, which then when you're building and you put more muscle in your body, your metabolic rate you know, is increased and you can burn more fat at rest, which is perfect. This is one of the keys I'm going to talk about when we get into talking about menopause and when you hit over the age of 30, because it's super important <laughs> to, to do that. Um, but also, you reduce your insulin levels, like your blood sugar starts to really stabilize. It also has been proven, proven, I just went through because I was like, let me find the study. I need to find it so I can't just be like blah, blah, blah. It's now been proven to help reduce stress and depression. Let me explain that again. And and I would like to know why I need to do, a, I want to see if I have the actual clinical reason why, because it also helps increase your self confidence so you increase your self-confidence you're in, you're decreasing your stress and depression what? so not only that you're reducing your oxidative stress which is the stress inside your body meaning you don't have antioxidants you have too many radicals also reducing your inflammation so huge benefits oh, oh let's also cover autophagy because that's one of the biggest things that really drew me to fasting and it wasn't um the weight for me, I really needed parameters of like, here's the rules. I can't eat off of this. <laughs> I can't eat off of this. And also the autophagy. I had put so much garbage in my body at that point, you know, with junk food. I mean, I was raised on junk food and fast food and all of that and had been eating it for forever. I didn't have a golf cart for God's sake. <laughs> so I was like, let me, let me look into this. Autophagy is really when you start to fast and um, your cells start to repair themselves and it starts to clean out that waste material from the cell. So really on a cellular level helps you. It helps you in a mental health level. Like it has so many benefits. Now a lot of a couple of years ago um there were some studies I would say studies. I mean articles. Articles sounds also there was blogs <laughs> saying that when you fast you can also increase your cortisol. So fasting can put stress on the body if you're super super here's the other unbalanced this is why more studies need to be done. Is because if you're super, super, super stressed, they say that might not be the best time to fast. But then also we have studies that say it's proven to reduce stress. So why wouldn't you just go hand in hand? Um, I can tell you that when I'm super, super stressed, I am generally not hungry. So I fast without feeling like I'm, you know, an intending to fast. Um, but it also helps me not make bad choices with food because when I'm stressed or, you know, really struggling, if I'm like, well, I'm going to fast to try and just like get through the day or whatever, then that takes off like, well, I'm stressed. So I need to go out and get a Starbucks cake pop or that's not even what I would choose from Starbucks, but or like a Starbucks grilled cheese or something, <laughs> something like that. So massive benefits really to intermittent fasting. Um, and more interestingly enough are the new studies coming out for the benefits of mental health, which is really interesting to me. For some reason, I, I find that really fascinating that you can fast and it, it helps relieve stress, depression, and anxiety. So it's, it's a really good tool. Now, for women over the age of 30, okay? and I always said age 35, but I really want to stress on age 30. And here's why. Because once you're age 30, I don't know about you, but the things that were in your 20s, they ain't working anymore weight loss thing or you know like ah all those things they are trying to stop working you know trying to punish your body with cardio and like all the things you're not doing that they they stop working and also, once you hit 30, and especially women 35 is when your body's really start to you start to change not go through massive massive changes but you are starting to have some changes you're starting to have hormonal changes you're starting to have gray hairs you're starting to do all of those things now I say 30 because it's good to just get into a good routine and to have the time to find what works for you because now I'm at the point where I've been fasting for on a regular basis for long enough that even when I'm fasting and then I break my fast, calculating what I'm going to eat later, I know how to break my fast in an appropriate way 
it's going to make me feel good and it's going to help sustain until I have my next meal. So you, you find out what works for your body. You find out, oh, I, you know, when I started intermittent fast, I started with a 12 hour fast and I started pushing back that in eating window um, by 15 minutes, usually every other day or, you know, depending on how I was feeling. Again, like if you have something like a big leg day, doing a fast after a huge day, if you're really hungry, that's not really good for your body. <clears throat> Sorry. So again, that's, yes, intermittent fasting, but finding what works for you and your body and what's going on at the time. And if you have to take your fast early, thinking like, this is my rigid timeline, but I'll tell you this morning I broke fast early, which means I will probably start fasting tonight earlier than I normally would have. If I don't, it's not a huge deal. I know I do it early enough to have the benefit of it. Now, once you hit 30, 35, 40, we're going to creep into menopause. The benefits for women, once you start to hit pre-menopause, you're creeping up. Intermittent is going to really help. Again, number one, because it's going to help those HGH uh, hormone levels, which is going to help you build muscle. This is a huge problem when women get menopause because after menopause, you start to lose your muscle mass. So for women, most of the time, we lose, I think that we're around 50% of our muscle mass once we get age 55, 60. After, after menopause, we're losing that muscle mass. That sucks. <laughs> Let's just say that right there. Let's just admit that that's going to suck. Um, but the more muscle you put in your body now, the better off you're going to be then you're going to mitigate really that muscle loss. So women we found um actually from the 50s well you know the whole sum of women in cardio not building any muscle not i wouldn't say building muscle but not doing strength training really just doing cardio that's uh, that's the generation where you're really seeing like you no know, i'm not talking about crap but you see flabby arms are of this and it's because they were programmed all this we i feel like this is the generation of 20 year olds coming out now now realizing like I need to do some training and that's awesome. So we're we're really having this shift. But in my generation of women, it's still like really working to get into the gym. Um and fasting will really help you increase, like I said, increase your muscle mass, which is gonna raise your metabolic rate and gonna decrease your fat. Huge problem among elderly women. So fasting is actually um something that can help mitigate that metabolic syndrome and metabolic disorder that comes with menopause. Um, also shown to reduce obviously, depression, anxiety, and stress, which we already talked about, but also when we're talking about menopause, we're talking about those stressors and the things like night sweats, you hear about hot flashes, um, the, the hair, the chin. I'm not saying that it's going to fix anything. Okay, this is the end all be all, but I'm telling you this is stuff now, all new studies to show that this is going to help mitigate when we're going through that next because <laughs> hot flashes, like sweats, like all those things, if I can help my and not only that, um, really anxiety and depression that comes with any emotional swings that comes with menopause and perimenopause and you know all of those fast really helps um, let it out so you can feel better while you're going through a mass transition in life. Did I want to talk about benefits of the metabolic function I did. Um, it's really, like I said, one of those massive tools that people have been doing for forever, the dawn of time. Um, I remember though five years ago when I was telling people I was fasting, I was doing, you know, I, you know, I can't eat, I'm doing a fast, I'll break my fast. I don't know if it was just where I was at in Arizona or what. Like you're fasting, you're starving yourself. That sounds like an awful idea. You know, and you're like, you try and explain. I think it's it's been that trend for so long now that people, hmm, okay, sticking around, doing like, oh, this is an acai, bowl. it's going to fix everything. This is something where fasting can be poor. I've done, I think the longest I've ever done is a day fast. Um, and those can be difficult, but they also, and all these have really good benefits, but not that benefit of weight loss. We really are feeling that that's what it's going to be. I want to think that
back like to our marriage. And yes, you lose weight, you're building muscle, you're you're building fat, so it's great for that overall. But again, really just for overall health and longevity. And I want to read this one sentence before off. I'm trying to be uh, too long to do. Um, appreciate your I appreciate you being here with me. Um, here. Wait, 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 wait. really want to. So oh, I'm sorry. sorry. So this is this. I'm actually going to link the study here in the comments because this is about fasting and the benefits of women's health. And it does talk about women's health over a certain, also just across the board. We're talking about cancer links. We're talking about links for osteoporosis, all those things. Fasting is showing as with cancer patients. Also with porn victims, fasting across the board is again one of those tools for health and longevity. So practicing fasting is just help you for the long term. So here's the last the conclusion is this I don't know if you're familiar with studies, um, but when you read actual medical they go through here's the abstract, here's what they think is gonna happen and then they'll cover each different um like section if they had, if they had them. Like this one for has cancer, has mental health, has metabolic health Muscle, muscle, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> musculoskeletal conditions. That's such a problem with that. Um, so here is the conclusion. The conclusion is at the end, kind of just wrap up everything. It talks about what enters various health issues during both pre and post menopause period affects their quality of life to a greater extent. Fast is a non pharmacological intervention. Mm -hmm. so, since ancient times by various medical diseases for broad spectrum of diseases. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, you know, back in the day, your uh, doctor or your shaman or your dude who was really healthy, your lawyer would be like, I think you should fast. This might fix it. <laughs> so the, the end, the last sentence says, nevertheless, it goes through a whole, if you want to read the whole thing, you absolutely can. I'm going to post it. Nevertheless, fasting can be Prescribed. Prescribed is the word used here. When I want to tell you, I've been in pharmacy for 14 years. I did all different kinds of pharmacy. I did retail pharmacy, I've also mixed therapy, I've done compound, I've made pill creams, I've done all these things. And to hear something like especially today's society that's not pharmacological, that this is what you need to prescribe patients, is jarring. I was what? <clears throat> Nevertheless, it can be prescribed as a safe medical intervention as well as a lifestyle regime which can improve women's health in many folds. Many folds. So, I love intermittent fasting. I'm a huge advocate for it. Uh, for myself, I know that it has helped me in many, many, many different facets of life. I also know that. Myself, I'm going to turn 30. I'm slowly going into the 40s. I know that I'm going to go into menopause and I use this as a tool to get through that, mitigate the symptoms, and especially mental health symptoms. Um, I've been having a rough week the last you know, couple weeks and really been working hard to take care of my mental health, um, including fasting. So, using that as a tool to help myself get back to feeling better and feeling more like my again. Um, oh, oh, I got one thing I want to bring up about fasting. <laughs> the rules of fasting, this is kind of very random, but when we're talking about an eating, a lot of people will ask, well, what can you have when you're fasting? Fasting is a water. Water is a yes. Juice is a no. Juice will always have that on the <laughs> um, Black coffee, yes. I don't do black coffee tastes like I can't. I can't live my life with black coffee. <laughs> the day that I have black coffee, I think that's the day that it's over. <laughs> um, you do happen like a coffee in the morning and you're looking to have a little bunch of my cream or whatever it is. Um, as long as this is very simple, but the cup in general has been calories that as long as 
50 calories, it's not going to burn fast, and that is considered what they call dirty fat, meaning that it's still fasting, you did have a little something, but it wasn't enough to basically get your body out of ketosis, which is what people are really shooting for, for fasting, getting your body in ketosis, and more people are just focused on that fat burn, wanting that fat burn, and you, I think it's just stubborn, because when you son just for fat burn, it doesn't work. No, I, I've done fasting for a long time. I've done it. When I took that focus of weight loss, I'm going to do it for a And I eat, I'm going to eat things that are going to be good for my body, help me, help my mental health too. All of that just made, it made me feel So, like I said, it's very interesting that the new studies are showing that it reduces stress and anxiety. Because I think we need with that after the last years. So <laughs> that's kind of just an intermittent thing going over the journey. Um, I know I have a ton of information on fasting. If you have any questions, watching this as a stick them in there. Maybe do like a part of intermittent fast for all of the whatever it is. Listen, no one's talking. Turning on today. My series is dude. Look! I had too many times on my computer. So. Alright, so I'm not going to talk anymore. <clears throat> Appreciate you being with me. Wow, a little bit longer. one. Really, a lot of information. We're in fasting. It's one of those that are extremely beneficial. <laughs> it seems like an easy tool, but, you know, without doing all of the and all of that, you really confused. You can actually kind of swing the other way. Just to balance just to feel it. <laughs> any questions in fasting that I didn't or that you can or you want clarification or anything, please do not hesitate to put um, in our comments in the comment section and see it and uh really answer I like to read or go over whatever it is. I'm here for you. I'm your best I'm just I just love you. I just want to give you information. Speaking of, if you are not part of the warrior yet, like, what are you doing? Like, I, I thought we had something. Um, but you can join the warrior at Renee.com. It's completely, but it is a community of women just like you, ready to control cravings, control of their life and their health, their weight, their good, especially through my house. So, um, I'll put a link here in the comments. You can go join the warrior at Renee.com. Also, I have a quiz on my website. Could you be addicted to It's based on the addiction scale, based on science. So, if you're questioning, can I be addicted to the quiz? You can visit it Renee Paul's. I'll put it's the same link. The other one to join the tribe, but I'll put it here for you. And I hope to see you there. I hope you also have real estate as fast as you are. I love you a bunch. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you later. Bye bye.